Hello everyone, my name is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries and today I have a treat for you. It's video. This video is called Staged Models. The principle is you have a model that you've created and you've designed it and you're complete, you've completed the design and then you want to show the different manufacturing stages that are required to make an accurate model. When you have designed it, you've also created your PMI callouts. You're using model-based definition to do it. And you want to be able to call out certain planes and certain dimensions that will go from the design model to and through the various stages of manufacturing. So in order to proceed, you go to Applications, Staged Models. And the very first choice you make is how many stages you want to represent your model. So you get into the staged models package, the way I've shown, and then you are thrust into the staged model navigator. And there you click on staged model set, and the very first thing you do is specify how many stages you want. In this case, I'm going to specify three stages. The name of this part file is Blisk stages. And so when I make these stages, these staged models, there's going to be four models in all, and they're all going to relate to the main model. So I say, okay. And right away, NX does its awesome thing. And as you can see right here, I have the original Blisk on the right hand menu or the right hand display window. And I can go back and forth as you can see in the staged uh, model navigator to the different stages that I now want to create. So the very first thing I want to do is create stage one. And as you can see, I have a window here for the original Blisk and have a window for stage one. Uh, now, perhaps the first thing I'll do is go into the view command and make four uh, tabbed, it's a tabbed group, four views so that's nice that I can um, display that so easily. And they have a layout, if you will, that has the views in it. And uh, so now this is a view of every single, uh, every single stage that I'm going to create. So when I click on Blisk 1, the very first stage, the uh, job is to now um, do a link. I want to link the geometry from the Blisk to stage one model. So I simply go to the link geometry command and I'm linking the entire body of the Blisk. And then it comes into the stage one Blisk. Okay. Now you notice in my Blisk file, I have these PMI callouts. I've got different datum planes. I've got different dimensions, etc., etc. Um, but I only want to bring over the uh, callouts that make sense in terms of the geometry that's going to be here. So what I'm going to do now is go to the um, go to the uh, reuse command. I'm going to make I'm going to enable or activate if you if you will, Blisk one stage one, and I'm going to go to reuse PMI, and I'm going to grab. Uh, certain callouts that I have from this model. I'm grabbing the callouts for the. Uh, there's a concentric concentricity here. There's um, diameters. There's the diameter of the bolt holes. There's um, uh, there's these uh, holes here. Uh, maybe I shouldn't actually grab those because I'm going to get rid of those holes. But anyway, you'll see what I'm doing in just a second. So I'm grabbing a bunch of these PMI notes. Here's uh, datum B and say, okay. And as you can see, they come right in to my new model. Now, what I want to do is emulate, if you will, that in this first stage, what's going to be not present, if you will, in this model that's present in the actual model is all of these little scallops. So this model is going to represent the model before all the scallops are machined. 
And so I'm going to go into the uh, delete command, delete, and I'm going to select one of these little scallops here. And I'm also going to go to uh, this little thing that says exact match. So it selects all of the ones that are similar and I'm going to say apply. And that's going to delete all of those scallops. Of course, it didn't work for some reason. So I'm going to just take another look and see what happened and why. That should work. Maybe I selected. Let's just take that away. Okay. Let's take that away and say apply. Uh, delete. Delete failed because the remaining faces cannot close. Okay. I'm going to have to figure this out. Hold on. Is there some? Oh, that's the problem. There's a little face that I just didn't realize was there. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that's taken care of. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say apply. Okay, so that works. So I'm going to go back and do that the right way. Let's go into the delete command. And I'm going to select tangent faces. That's what I should have done in the first place. And I'm going to say exact match so it gets all of them. And I'm going to say apply. And look at that. They're all gone. Right? I'll do the same thing with these. Exact match. Get rid of them all, please. And so now you have the model before all of those scallops are done. And I guess I will also do an offset. I'm going to offset this face. And I'm going to offset that face. And so the premise here, I'll put uh, 0.125 there. And so the premise here is when you're making this blisk, you're going to start with something that's bigger. And then you're going to do the fine machining right here. And you're going to machine it, but you're going to also hold this uh, plane A as something that's very important to you. And you're also going to have a certain dimension, uh, this dimension here. That's also very important to you. So um, as you can see, this is now uh, the stage before the finished product. So great. So I'm done with that. Uh, the very next thing is I'll close all of this up and I'll go to Blisk 2, the stage Blisk 2. So now that's enabled and that's going to be down here. And the very ne next thing I'm going to do is link the geometry from this stage to that stage. So there you go. Okay, so now with this stage, the premise is this is the stage where we drill all these holes and or this is the stage just before. This is the stage where we drill the holes. And so the holes should be in this stage, but not in this stage. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to reuse the PMI, the pertinent PMI. That'll be this dimension here. It'll be, um, it'll be the diameter dimension. It'll be this little call out, this plane, etc. cetera. Um, and this will be irrelevant because the holes are not going to be there when I'm done. So say, okay, on that one, good. So there's the PMI in this model that I care about. And again, I'm going to go to the delete face. And I'm going to select uh, this hole with exact match. So it will select all of them that, that look just like it. And I'll select this one with exact match as well. Doink. And say OK. And just like that, all the holes are gone. And so that's what, how we're emulating this stage. Um, I think we'll also, in this stage, um, there's, a, there's kind of a scallopy cut here. And let us assume that that is also not available in this stage. That's, a, that's something that's done here. So I'm going to do delete. And I'm going to delete these little faces here. Say OK. There you go. And I will also add some material to this little face right here and this little face right here. Now notice the current value, the current distance is 3.485. Uh, inches plus or minus 0 0.05 here, 0, 0, 0.05, five thousandths. And I'm going to do a little offset 
on this face and I'm going to offset on this face, meaning that before we uh, do the do the do the uh, the next stage, we're going to machine off those surfaces. But look at what happened here. The uh, dimension that we have in between those faces updates very nicely. So that is really cool. Um, I would continue and show you the next stage, but I think it's more important to show you that um, all of these models are related. They're all linked. You can see there's a linked body entity there. So then what you might think uh, next is if I make a change to this particular model, then it will propagate through these. And so let me show you what you have to do in order to make that happen. So here I am going to uh, Blisk one, the very first one. And I think what I'll do is I'll put some, an offset surface on all of these little faces here. Okay, so I'm gonna select these little entities, select them all, and I'm gonna do something that's outrageous. I'm gonna put like one inch onto each one of these blades, or maybe I'll make it even um, weirder, three inches and say, okay. And so as this model is updated, what you can see is that this model, the stage one and the stage two do not update. Why is that? Well, I'm going to save them all, file, save all. That's always nice, file, save all. Say, okay, there. And I'm gonna show you, this is a very, very important detail about stage models when it comes back, that when I hit the M key, when I go back into modeling and I go to tools, there is a delay link update that is turned on. You see that? Delayed link update. So I want to turn, take that off. And as soon as I take that off, then and only then do the changes propagate through all the files. So that is a fantastic technique. Um, you use it to your great advantage to represent different stages of manufacturing that are linked to the original model. And this is the kind of power that works with your model-based design paradigm um, that will really save you time, save scrap, and you'll get all the other benefits from the manufacturing process. So thank you very much for watching. Again, my name is Steve Samuel from Design Visionaries, and I hope you've enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe if you can. And uh, this model will actually be available um, on our website in the goodies uh, section of Design Visionaries website. That's www.designvisionaries.com or designviz.com. Uh, please comment on this video. I uh, read all the comments. Um, if you have a question, I'll try to get back to you. Um, if you send a email to info at designviz.com, I'll be glad to engage you directly. Thank you very much.